we've got a long road ahead of us because now we have to turn the apathy of a community around a community that don't believe change is going to come a community that says we've been waiting on change for so long and every post and every sign and every button you guys have put up promise the same yet when you get in the office the mundane becomes the status of the day but what is hope my platform is restoring hope and what is hope hope is the expectation that things have got to get better if we lose our hope we lose our way so what are some of the things my platform one of the platforms that I'm carrying is that I have a strong burden for the 734 students that were discharged last year that was suspended 734 kids left to the wild to walk the streets to form their imaginations and we wonder why we can't keep do you not know that during the day that the store owners here won't allow our kids in the community to come into their stores they won't allow them to come sit in their restaurants oh come on talk to me you don't know that from 12 from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock you cannot they won't let them walk in so they treat them at a window a drive through window like a heathenist individual and they talk to them so disparaging but yet we go back and support it because this is all we's got we've got to look at that putting education before suspension teaching our children conflict and resolution that when you come across this issue the next time this is how you should respond we've got to teach you to make better choices and better responses. We've got to talk to them and help them understand that this is not it, that there is more outside of these gates, but we've got to stop reducing their ability to excel and achieve. If you made a 63, you made a 63. If you made a 65, you made a 65. Because let me tell you something, there's more schools for our children to go through than Nassau University. Nassau Community College. We make them believe that Nassau is it. But what happened to Harvard? What happened to Yale? What happened to Howard? Come on, talk to me. What happened to Duke? What happened to Morehouse? See, in those environments, if you have not prepared them and you don't wean them, to begin to excel, they'll get there and do mediocre things. And when someone tells them that's unacceptable, it'll break their spirit because all along we've allowed them to get by with mediocre behavior. So when they come against it and become a contender, they can't contend because in other words, we put up a, a contest and then people compete because the person didn't win that we wanted to win, then we say everybody's a winner. So we give everybody a trophy. But you all know that that don't happen in the real world. You get rewarded for your accomplishments. And if you don't win, you learn how to go back and redo it and come back stronger, better, and wiser. So we've got to talk about that. We've got to talk about these catchments. We have different areas, different communities, different schools who are sitting around. Why can't we have somebody on the board from every area? Why do we have to vote at one site? Why can't we have multiple sites? Come on, we pay enough taxes. We pay enough taxes for electronic voting. Why? You know why? Because we used to and believe that you never, you never question the house, Negroes. Well. Because <laughs> that's what they say. You don't have a right to question what we do. Let me tell you how I know that's true. Because there's no way you can have a board meeting that starts at 7 and over by 7.20. No way. Oh, no, 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 no way. You can't even say the Pledge of Allegiance that fast. <laughs> Oh, 
But guess what? We laugh and we walk by. They just crazy. That's why I don't come to these meetings no how. Because this same foolishness go. No, at the point you put your foot down and say enough is enough. No, you will respect me and respect my money. Every child may not be college ready. He may not desire to go to college. Doesn't make him a bad kid. Doesn't make her a bad kid. It just simply means that I've chosen another path. But at the end of the day, it's all gonna lead me to victory. Why have we don't have the programs in our high school that prepares them. That not only when they step in the collegiate doors, come on, we got some young men that are phenomenal at cooking. What would happen? Come on, come on, where's the vocational training at? We got some phenomenal debaters. What happened to the law and the poli sci programs? What happened? Where, where do we prepare them? that when they walk in, they're already walk in as winners. You know what we say? They don't need all that. They need to get a job and make some money. Help pay for that college tuition. So we get twisted because what you don't really realize that as a people, there's more money lying in the cut for us than ever before. We just gotta know how to go get it. Oh, the county has learned. They learned how to get it. Because last year, all of the money that was, broke, that was supposed to be sent to our communities ended up on the North Shore. And all of their kids got summer jobs. And you know what our kids did? A wishing and a hoping and a praying and a singing. <laughs> and their mothers, and what they didn't realize is that many of those kids work summer jobs, help to sustain their household compositions and help to sustain their household budgets. And when they took that money out of our children's mouths, we sat back. He's going to wait till our change come. Well, I've come to tell you tonight in my conclusion, we don't have to wait any longer. Our change is here. So, what do we have to do from here? Let's stop looking for all of the rich people in Hempstead and claiming that those are the only people that got power. Let's hit the street. Let's get some of these young mothers, some of these young fellows that nobody believes in, that believe can bring change. Can I tell y'all something? Street cred is the best influence. And many of them got street credibility. All they need is to say one word, Mookie, Nook, Nook, all of them. Yo, that's my man. Yo, go vote for my man. And that's street credibility right there. Come on, don't play with it. I grew up on Martin Luther King Drive. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. There was one mother. All she had to do was talk for everybody. And she said, listen, Miss Minnie said we're going to go down there and vote for row A, David Gates. You tell everybody you know. And everybody went because Miss Minnie said, go. Let's not become so bougie that we forget from whence we've come. In where we are right now. Is a, so what we've got to do now is immobilize ourselves and hit these streets. 60,000 residents in the village of Hempstead. The last year's elections, only 1,200 people. That's 2%. 2%. It's not even 10%. And so we say, no, no, these people care about their babies. Come on. Numbers don't lie. Everybody in this room knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. I conclude with this. When Joshua and Caleb went into the promised land. The Lord gave them confidence. He says, as I was with my servant Moses, 
so shall I be with you. And everywhere the soles of your feet tread, I'm going to give it to you. Listen to this. Everywhere the soles of your feet tread, I'm going to give it to you. You won't get nothing until your feet hit the street. He says, everywhere the soles of your feet tread. That means you got to go walking. He didn't say everywhere the soles of your seat sat. Because we can sit and find wrong in everything. But everywhere the soles of your feet tread. That I'm going to give to you. My name is David Gates and I approve this message.